any intriguing stories? I know that, you know, I think of it as some of the best investigative journalism we do because people like Patagonia's founder do not like to be on the list. I think that was a big factor in him giving away his company recently. But what are some of the intriguing trends, people, or stories that you see from this year's list to keep an eye on? Yeah. Um, you know, I think I think it's interesting to see, for example, the crypto billionaires uh, who had a had a particularly rough year. Uh, we lost a few of them. Are they still? I was going to say, are they still billionaires? Because you know, that's... Uh, some are billionaires. Uh, even fewer are still on the Forbes 400. I think we went from seven to four this year. So, uh, so we've we've lost a few. But then, it, it, but at the same time, you know, in downturns is often when billionaires are made, or when billionaires uh, find ways to really level up their wealth they you know these people oftentimes are cash rich uh even in downturns and they buy stuff up you know at a bargain and, and so for example you can see sam bank and free one of the youngest you know uh, self-made billionaires in the world one of the you know the youngest people on the forbes 400 uh he's 30 uh he's been buying up crypto companies and propping up other companies and doing things like that and so you know it will be interesting to see what the payoff is for that, you know, in the future. And there are other people on the 400 like that who sort of uh, are smart enough and are fortunate enough to be in a position where they can follow the the Warren Buffett advice of, uh, you know, being greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. So right now people are fearful and, uh, you know, there are plenty of billionaires who are, who have the money to, to sort of be greedy and, uh, and keep amassing great wealth. Let me ask another question, Chase, which is I, I know that some types of wealth are very easy to track, and I am certainly aware that there are many people who believe we underrepresent or overrepresent. It's very political and personal and, you know, ego driven as to how people assess their own wealth. What are some of the more interesting or challenging ways that you track people's wealth? I mean, um, you know, or, or some of the games that people play? Yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, it's it's interesting because sometimes we'll put this a list like this out, and um, you know, there will be a criticism that it's that it's it's a list of generally old white men, for example. Uh, but you know, our our role in this is really to just count the money and find it where where we can find it. And so, you know, I think it it's really that's you know that's an important point, and it's something that we try to keep in mind. Uh, you know, and we try to highlight the success stories that are outside of that, as, you know, as much as we can. But at the end of the day, you kind of can only work with what you have. And, right. uh, you know, and, and our job is to sit there and sort of count the money and and the analysis of it and, and all of that is, you know, is, you know, that's a bigger, that's a bigger picture sort of. Uh, and some are more transparent than others, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, so that is, you know, just with that caveat, I, I will say, you know, it is, uh, it is truly one of the biggest investigative projects in business journalism that's, that's done every year. I mean, it's an enormous project to try to dig into the great fortunes of, of the, you know, the people in America, many of whom would really rather that we didn't. And it's important that we do because it's important to know who these people are. They hold great power, you know, great authority. And, um, you know, it's, it's very important that, that we track that. But, uh, but a lot of them really would rather we didn't. I mean, of course, <laughs> why would you want to have be on the cover of Forbes magazine, you know, or, or be featured in Forbes magazine for your wealth if you can have all of that wealth and nobody know who you are? Uh, there are a lot of billionaires who feel that way. Not all of them, but there are, are a lot who do. And so, you know, it can be really tough to, to track what they own. And, and so, you know, for those who have public companies, it's, it's pretty easy because, you know, if they own a certain amount of the company or if they work for the company, they generally have to tell you how much they own. And it's, right. it's a little more complicated than that, but but they do generally have to at least give you a good idea, something to work with. And, uh, you know, but then for people who have private businesses, it's, it's really tough. And for people in the world of crypto, you know, for all of the talk of, um, you know, how transparent crypto is and, and all of that, when it comes to tracking the, the, the wealth held by, you know, great crypto fortunes, it's extremely difficult. So uh, yeah, it really, it really depends. And, and, you know, some of the billionaires work with us very closely and we have, you know, long working relationships with, and uh, you know, and other billionaires hang up on us if they answer the phone at all. 
And, uh, you know, others tell us stories that we don't exactly believe. And, you know, we've written about that a lot over time. And it's, Very you know, it's important so. for us to, to hear out what everybody has to say. We run our numbers by everybody. But also, you know, trust but verify is, is kind of the guiding, you know, motto for all of that. And so there's a lot of claims that we can't verify that we, uh, you know, are very careful not to publish. Well, 